China has a red alert, and it's on the brink of a water catastrophe. 600 cubic meters of water are required on the yearly basis. Such marvelous needs have arisen a serious issue of water scarcity. With dropping water levels and rising heat waves, government authorities have declared it a major crisis for the country. All these have led to significant effects on China's grain production and electricity production, eventually creating a problem for the majority of the sectors there. The major problem lies in the water distribution system of China and is now the major burden on the government's shoulders. Without a doubt, the government has taken some steps to solve this problem and find a reasonable solution for it, but it's bound to be time-consuming and expensive as well. And also, thanks to innovative technology that can help water retention and fulfill the rising needs of the people and also gear up farming. How is China dealing with this? Is it only this nation or others that are also facing this kind of a problem? What could be a reasonable solution to it? Let's buckle up to find some facts about this serious issue in the 21st century, all revolving around water scarcity. A whopping 40% of the world's population is struggling to get access to fresh waters. This is insane. Of all the nations, the worst affected is China, which is facing a record-breaking drought for a couple of years now. In saying this, the Yangtze is one of the live examples of drought-affected rivers in the country. Long-running heat waves have severely affected the nations at a point and have eventually resulted in halted shipping. These regions were filled with water all the time, and the water levels were so high that they used to submerge those 600 years old Buddhist idols. However, nowadays, one can easily spot those idols. The drop in the water level is crazy. What could be the reason behind this red alert? Firstly, what could be a major issue is China's water distribution network. Most of the water sources are available in the southern regions, and the majority of the farming practices are done in northern areas. There is a separate inline arrangement for transferring waters from southern areas to northern areas. Transferring fresh waters from south to north is a major issue and is the most expensive for China's government. However, this inline separates east and west China, where the majority of the population resides. So the requirement for fresh water is massive in these areas, and so maximum fresh water ends up being used here. However, the government tries to use more fresh water for agricultural purposes, but this will end up being a serious issue for the people of China. So what now? What could be the solution to this serious issue? Let's glimpse how some deserted areas are managing their resources and dealing with water shortages. South Morocco has a unique location as it's entirely surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, which leads to fog and super cold winds all the time in this region. However, we cannot even forget the fact that this area is on the transitional side of the Sahara Desert. Because of its absurd geographical location, this area is extremely dry and arid in the summers. And apart from its geographical location, what is more problematic is decreasing rainfall over the years. In the last few decades, rainfall in this area has reduced dramatically, and this has affected the nomadic community who are the major people residing in the vast expanse of modern Sahara. This area is bound to receive less than 5.2 inches of rainfall every year, which accounts for less than 10% of the global average. These figures are the reality check for the Sahara Desert. Being one of the driest places, it's known for severe droughts. Most of the men have to rush to urban areas in search of work and to survive, whereas women stay in villages. These women have to walk almost 3 miles daily to fill up water from the wells for their daily requirements. But the thrilling fact says, most of the wells in those areas are also drying out now because of decreasing water levels. Is it even possible to survive in such harsh climatic conditions? We often have a misconception that surviving in such a crazy environment is not at all possible. But the fact says, nomadic people have already lived generations on generations in such climates and areas to continue their agricultural practices and also for trade purposes. Nevertheless, it's not only climatic conditions that are responsible for less fauna in this region, but another problem is the existence of soldiers, armed forces, automobiles, and other automatic weapons, which destroy the majority of the fauna in those deserted areas. Because of these extreme factors in the 20th century, most of the nomadic communities declined and the majority of them shifted to urban areas for easy survival. So there was no one after that to manage such gigantic hectares of deserted areas and turn those barrens into profits. What now? Is there any ray of hope to transform such massive places into profitable land? Well, the climatic conditions are hilarious in the entire Sahara Desert. However, some of the new technologies and projects are vital solutions for such problems, and execution of it would eventually solve the majority of the problems there. 
Through human management, some of the nomadic tribes are converting those drylands into hospitable places. The largest water capturing system is being set up in southwest Morocco in the Sahara region to provide quick access to safe drinking water for the people residing there. It's not one village, but a massive 16 villages in that area will be accessible to this technique, and it's fascinating to watch how amazingly they will be using this fresh water to irrigate their farmlands. Once the farms are irrigated, they'll get rid of desertification. Finally, turning those barren lands into an oasis and growing varied varieties of healthy and tasty fruits and vegetables. The incredible ray of hope for such arid regions is Isaac Durham, an amazing mathematician and businessman. His family used to reside in the area where the majority of the time, that is 130 days in a year, those lands were covered with a mist. He came up with the idea of collecting water through the mist and using it for irrigation purposes. It was the first project in the 1980s when Isa Durham managed to collect a few gallons of water through the nets. However, this could be also helpful for his parents to survive in Mount Butmenskida, but with a technological touch. A creation of this solution was a must, as the new technology will also be able to manage a collection of water even in strong winds. At a rate of almost 100 km per hour, winds blowing from the Atlantic Ocean are crazy enough to manage. How is this possible? Is there any technology that can survive insane winds from the Atlantic? An expert, Isa Durham, collaborated with a German firm, Vascular Stiffen. Finally, both of them in collaboration came up with an amazing solution known as Aqualonis. This technique helps in the collection of water through fog nets with rubbers, which will also help in reducing the impact of fast winds. It is strong enough to survive the wind force of 120 km per hour. Apart from the rubber, they have a flexible trail that follows the movement of the net in the wind. Thanks to the space air in an innovative project with larger surface area so it can easily manage to produce maximum yields compared to flat woven mesh fabrics. Aqualonis has amazingly expanded in the last decade and managed to install a marvelous 15 Aqualonis projects in such arid regions. Now it is the world's largest collector park. Yes, they have expanded in a classic pattern and are spread across 1,682 square meters of mesh. This excellent innovation in the deserted areas has helped in covering 16 villages and varied schools by providing fresh water for drinking and for irrigation purposes too. From the reports, it was found that almost 1,600 people residing in this deserted area will have access to 18 liters of water per day per person because of this out-of-the-box process. Now with such advancements in water availability, people can spend more time doing other necessary things. The women who used to spend half of their days walking in sandy areas to collect water could now concentrate in their studies, and farmers can now grow all the modest fruits and vegetables as per the growing needs of the people. Also, with this fascinating project and collection of fresh water, there are new increased income opportunities, and looking at them, most of the urban population is now opting for going back to their villages and earning better. So isn't this solution an incredible one? Indeed it is. The expansion rates say it all. Soon, the system will also be installed in the areas where the fog is three times what it was in Mount Butmesgida. If this happens, the adoption rate might shoot up, and after that, these deserted areas will not at all be a problem for the people residing there. This can also be adopted in all parts of the world and could also solve the rising problem of water scarcity. So what are your thoughts on this innovative technique of retaining water in deserted areas? Will China adopt it? Do let us know your views in the comments below. That said, if you enjoyed watching how water scarcity is a red alert, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such exciting content. See you in the next video!